You know, as Christians, God wants us to do everything to live, to, to, for our lives to bring honor to God. Amen? Everything that we do, we say, the way we think, the way we work our work, the way we uh, uh, interact in our families, uh, with our friends, the way we conduct our business, if we're in business, is all to, in order to bring glory to God. It is, listen, it is to reflect Jesus Christ. Now, as Christians, we are bought by the blood of Jesus. We've been purchased. We've been bought right out of the slave market where we were destined to live a life in bondage and then to perish in the lake of fire. But God the Father offered to purchase us by the blood of Jesus and those of us in as many as said, yes, Lord, we confess that we're sinners. We realize that we've fallen short of your glory. And we receive Christ's life in place of our life. And when we do that, we're saved. Now, he, God calls us to honor him in everything we do. Do you hear what I'm saying? All the relationships that we have in the family, friends, co-workers, just acquaintances, Everything we do, everything we say, and everything we think is to bring glory and honor to God. Now, we're either moving more, uh, becoming more Christ-like, or we're becoming more worldly, one or the other. And there are things in the world, and there are relationships. The Bible says bad company corrupts good morals. There are things that are a danger to your salvation. And there's, a th there's things that are a danger to to your character, there are things and people who are a danger to your purity. God has called us to be pure. Now, this is a, a young lady I've known for a long time since she was a little bitty, and I love her just like a daughter, you see. Now, as a pastor, I love Chelsea like a daughter, and my love for Chelsea is a pure love. It's a pure love, and it'd be wrong for me to have any other kind of thinking toward Chelsea. You see, and, and as a pastor and as a Christian, I want to protect her purity. And I do that by my conduct. And I've never acted unbecomingly toward her nor toward any other person in the church. And I never will. Because I understand that as a pastor and as a Christian and as an elder in the church, I am to uphold the purity. And even though I regard her as, as a daughter, as a pastor, but as a Christian, she's my sister. She's made my sister by the Spirit of God, by being purchased by the blood of Jesus. Now, Brian, same way. Now, Brian is a single guy, and the way he interacts with her, he should protect her purity. You see, it's not just enough to be saved. God has called us to be pure and chaste, to be preparing to be the bride of Christ Jesus. Therefore, we're told not to act unbecomingly in order to put a stumbling block. That's why we have to watch what we wear, you see. That's why we have to, as women, have to dress modestly and be careful what they wear so that they don't cause impure thoughts to their brothers, to cause their brothers to begin thinking in a way other than being a brother. Do you see what I'm saying? Now listen, those of us who are married, we've entered into a contract. We've entered into a covenant, a covenant that requires a commitment. A husband is to love his wife as Christ loves the church. That's with a pure, perfect love. That is to put her first. That is to lay down his life for her. It is to be interested in what will please her and to make her happy and to fulfill her. That's what he's supposed to do. And to be a godly Christian husband, that's what you're supposed to do. And wives are told to honor and to obey their husband in the Lord. You see.
as long as it is in the Lord. If your husband tells you to do something that God says not to do, of course you don't do that. But you love and you honor and you obey your husbands in the Lord. And there is a commitment, you see, because that's an intimate union. Now, in the church, though, these two people don't have a covenant with each other. They have a covenant collectively with God. You see what I mean? And so their, their responsibility, and mine too, and yours also, is to bring honor and to walk according to the dictates of God's will, not according to the world, not according to the ways of the world. Amen? Y'all can go ahead there. So God calls us not only to salvation. God calls us not only to truth. God calls us not only to obey the gospel and to keep his commandments and things like that. God has called us to be pure at heart. You know what God told Isaiah? My people always go astray in their heart. It's their heart that goes astray. Their heart is set on things that are unlawful. You see, as Christians, we are to protect each other's purity. That means there's not any coarse jesting. There's not any uh, raw joking that goes on that, that is... Uh, you know, has a base foundation. That means that there's no uh, anything that produces a fruit other than purity <laughs> doesn't come from God. Amen? You know, God holds the marriage. You know, our doctrinal meeting today is on divorce and remarriage. And one thing I learned in my studies about that is that God hates divorce. And that from the very beginning, divorce was never in his plans. You know, it was allowed. It was permitted because of sin. It's just like a lot of other things. Uh, you know, there was laws added because of transgressions. There was things allowed because God knows how people are. But w when we look at it in terms of that, I don't want to look at it in terms of divorce. Let's look at it in terms of exalting the marriage covenant, how, how that is. When you exalt the marriage covenant. That is a commitment 